Hey, how you guys doing? It's me, Pitmaster JW, the competition barbecue team, JW Barbecue and Wing. And today I am going to show you how to fry some fried chicken wings stuffed with collard greens and rice. That's right, stuffed with collard greens and rice. And my first ingredients that we have is the master of the show, to be honest with you, is my chicken batter that I'm using, which is Morris chicken batter mix. And then stepping over here, I have my collard greens and rice all mixed up together. I have my little 10 inch cast iron pan here with canola oil inside waiting to heat up. And there's my chicken wings. I did cut the chicken tips off because I don't like the chicken tips. If you like chicken tips on yours when you fry your wings, then you know, do your thing. Okay, so let me get that all set up and I'll be right back with you guys in a minute. Bring my heat up the temp and I'll start working on stuffing the uh, chicken wings for you. Okay, so let me get started here showing you how to prep the chicken wings, to stuff the chicken wings, to put the collard greens and rice in. First thing you want to do, come up to the knuckle bone of the chicken wing, take your knife, punch a little hole just above the knuckle bone, and just slide that knife in there and just make your little groove. Okay, don't cut all the way through the chicken. And you do the same thing for the upper portion of the chicken wing. You just cut your little groove in there up under the skin without cutting through it. Okay, and you can punch your finger or push your finger through there like that. Then you know you got a deep enough hole in there. Okay, so I'm going to take these gloves off here because I'm having a little trouble here holding on to the skin with the gloves on. So now we're going to come back, once again, find the hole that I just punched just above the knuckle to separate the two pieces, the flap and the drumlet. Okay, just grab you some collard greens and some rice and you just go up in there and work that up under that hole that you just punched in the chicken. It might take a moment there, but finally you'll get a nice push and you'll be able to push it on up in there like I'm doing right now and just stuff that wing with some collard greens and rice. And just push it all the way down to the bottom until you can fill it up to the top. See how it's stuffed right there now? And then you come back, you do the same for the top of the drumlet and get up under that skin and push that collard green on collard greens and that rice down up under that skin and I'm looking at my temp here I might have to turn that down just a little bit because it's heating up just a little bit too fast okay and so now you have one collard green and rice stuffed chicken wing right there I'm going to put that one to the side and do another one. Same thing. Just come up to the bone or separate the winglet and the drum, drumlet. The flat and the drumlet, that is. Cut your little hole in there. Dig around until you got your nice little hole in there. Come back up to the drumlet, do the same thing. You see how I'm moving the knife around in there without punching a hole in the skin? Trying to pull the skin away from some of the meat. To give you some room to stuff your collard greens and rice up under. Okay, then you come back. Get another little batch of collard greens and rice. Stuff it down inside. And you can actually see it poking. I will show it through the chicken here okay and just knock off the excess collard greens and rice come back down stuff some in the flat now you just got to come back and find the hole <laughs> okay all right there it is Just stuff them collard greens down in there. Move the knife out of the way here. 
Uh, it's not easy, but it works. And you just put however much you want to. Okay, there we go. Knocking it off. And now you have two stuffed chicken wings with collard greens and rice. And let me tell you, it is delicious. I know you said, mmm, I never had that. I don't know about that. Well, give it a try and I'm quite sure that you would love it. Uh, the collard greens I cooked overnight and the rice I steamed earlier. And uh, you use your seasoning to your collard greens. Uh, however you cook your collard greens, just save a little bit to mix up in some rice. Chop it up real fine because it goes in better. Okay, now what I'm going to do now, now that I got those two stuff, I'm going to come over here. This is my chicken batter. Okay. And I'm going to batter a couple of pieces here. And as soon as I can get my temperature up to about 325, then I'll put my chicken wings in. So you guys hang tight. Guys, yeah, like I said, it's me, Pitmaster JW Competition Barbecue Team, JW Barbecue and Wing. And what I'm doing now, I am battering my chicken. And remember that I am doing some fried chicken wing stuff with collard greens and rice, okay? So, uh, let me get my chicken up in here. My grease is seeding up now. It's at 240, 245, quickly rising. So I go ahead and get my chicken battered up. While my grease is trying to come up to about 325 is where I like to keep my chicken at. That 350 is just a little bit much for me. It cooks a little too fast. And uh, it's not as moist as I like it to be cooking at that temperature. So I try to keep mine down about 25 degrees. Somewhere about 320, 325. That's why I generally keep my chicken. Okay, well it's wing. Any part of the chicken that I'm frying. I'm going to get this last piece in here and get it battered. And I'm using my Coleman outdoor stove. Pick up the Coleman. Okay. So I just let that temp is at 250 now. So it's climbing on up there quickly. And now, while I'm waiting for it to get on up to my desired temperature that I want, I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff out of the way here. Okay, it's just a little windy outside, but that's cool. I decided to do this outside because I'm going to fire with the grill very soon here. So I'm going to go right from frying chicken to grilling on the grill. From one to the other. Bam! Just like that. And now, the thing is that I'm using canola oil. The reason being because it has a higher cooking point than vegetable oil. I generally like cooking my chicken in peanut oil. But if you're cooking for someone you don't know really anything about and they didn't tell you they might have allergy issues or not, then it's the best to use probably vegetable oil or canola oil because you don't know whether well the individual might have some type of allergy reaction to peanuts. So you don't want to use peanut oil because of that fact. Okay, so the best thing to do if you don't know, ask them and if you can't get in contact with them, okay, are you doing this, say, for a group of people, uh, office party or something, mix variety. It's the best to just be on the safe side and just use some vegetable oil or canola oil. Okay, that way you ain't got to worry about nobody having a reaction to the peanut oil, which to be honest with you, would be the best oil, but safety first, right? Safety always first. Okay, so now I got my temperature. It's at 275. We're moving right along. I got my chicken batter. I'm going to step out of the way for a moment here. Okay, I'm back. And so now, I'm at 300. And my oil is beginning to sizzle just a little bit. And today is the first day of November 2022. Hope everybody had a happy Halloween uh, party, uh, trick or treat or whatever you did. Of course, we don't get into that anymore in this household. For various reasons and leave that alone. So now I'm getting back to the chicken. I'm gonna go ahead on and get ready to drop my chicken here. 
Okay, now when you put your chicken in a frying pan, if this is the first time frying some chicken, it don't have to be uh, the stuffed collard greens and rice. Just always make sure that you put your chicken, don't drop it, just lean it in away from you. And just let it sit down. Now, one way of knowing that your chicken is done is by using a probe and you're looking for that 265 at minimum, okay? And the thickest part of the chicken are when that chicken is in the frying pan and it stopped making that noise like it's frying itself crazy then you know that your chicken is ready when it's just salad it's time to remove that chicken so I'm going to go ahead and drop another piece in there like I said I'm using a little tennis skillet here and you don't want to overcrowd your pan because it'll bring down the temperature and the other thing is it can cause the oil to flash all over the place maybe causing a fire if you was using say a gas you know and just you don't want to put too much in the frying pan okay put it like that because it will decrease the heat and then you got to build the heat back up which will cause the chicken not to be real crispy when it's done Now I use this little thing sometimes when I'm out on the competition circuit, uh, when I'm doing things with me and my wife for dinner. Uh, we'll use something like this to keep them having a lot of things plugged up. And it's very convenient because you can take it, take it somewhere where it's not really in the way without needing to be close to an outlet to plug it into. And you just go on and do your thing. I'm at it cooking this chicken here. This generally takes about 10, maybe 12 minutes, give or take. Um, just like to let you guys know, uh, you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So the next time I decide to uh, upload something, you will be the first one to know that I just uploaded something that you might want to check out. And it might be something that uh, you might like to try yourself. So now I'm going to go ahead on this chicken that's been on for about close to 4 minutes now. Let's take a look at one piece before I roll it over see how it's doing I'm going to go ahead on and turn this over see how brown it is on that side and that's been on about close to five minutes now flip another piece over and they are nice and brown on each side I mean on that side and roll it over and let it cook for about five minutes or so maybe six minutes on the other side, it doesn't make any difference which side you put it in the frying pan first. So once again, just to remind you what's happening here is that I am frying some chicken stuffed with some collard greens and rice. And I know you say, wow, that is really different. But I'm telling you, if you try it one time, you'll like it. You'll want to try it again. Yes, it is a little time consuming, but it's worth every minute that you put into doing it. So I'm going to go ahead on and get these three done. And then I'm going to sit here, take them out, break one open, let you see how it looks inside. Mm, I wish you could taste it. But unfortunately, you know, I tell you, I mean, our videos are in TV. Smell a video. Smell a video. <laughs> okay. Don't you guys also forget to check out my website, which is www.jwbbqandwings.com. That's www.jwbbqandwings.com. And check out some of the other recipes and stuff that I have on my website. And there's a few things there you might like to also purchase. Some of my rubs, my sauce, and you find out just a little bit more about JW. And my barbecue competition team. Oh, those are looking so good. Those are looking so good. I'm about ready to take these out here in about two minutes or so. Oh, that was crispy. Listen to that sound.
like I say once again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So you'll know when I do something else, you'll know that it's time to go check out and see what JW is up to today. All right, guys, as you can see, listen to the sound. You really don't hear a lot of noise anymore. That's because the chicken is where it should be. It is ready to come out of the frying pan. I'm going to take it out of this frying pan. I'm going to set it over here on this cooling rack. And that's so I don't use paper towel because I don't want the paper towel to soak up all the grease that leaves the bottom of the chicken kind of soggy from setting in the wet paper towel. So I always use a cooling rack. Hey, hey, hey. A tip for the beginners. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shake this off. Take it over here and put it on my cooling rack. Bring it a little closer to me. Damn. Let you take a look at a piece here. Let you get a close look. And you see how crispy that is? Let's go ahead and put that down here too. Let it cool off for a moment. And then, uh, break into it and I'll show you the inside of the chicken stuck with collard greens and rice all right so I'll be back when it cools off a little bit hey now it's time to check out one of these chicken wings here they didn't cool off some I'm gonna go ahead on and rip one of these apart here mmm Mmm. Mmm. It is still very hot. But it is tasty. You see the collard greens and the rice. Stuffed inside the chicken green here. I mean stuffed inside the chicken wing chicken green. Okay. You getting three things at one time. You getting your meat. You getting your greens. And you get your starch all in one piece at one time. Mmm. I gotta go ahead and try another piece here, guys. Forgive me. Mmm. That is so delicious. You guys really need to try this. Like I said, you just follow the instructions I gave you and you cannot go wrong. And one other thing you need to do, and one other thing I need to do is go ahead and turn this chicken over. And I'll be right back with you there. Woo, listen to that sound. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Like I say, hit that subscribe button link below. So the next time I decide to upload something you guys will know, and you might want to try it out, and I'm quite sure that you guys are really going to want to try out this fried chicken stuffed with collard greens and rice. In the meantime, though, I want to give it you guys later on because uh, it's about time for me to throw down on some of this chicken here. So until I get with you guys again with another video, enjoy yourself, take care, and thanks for tuning in. I'm JW. Love you. Peace.